There once was a Chinaman named Quan Yi, and while he showed great promise as a young child, he always seemed forgotten on the bench of Guangzhou Evergrande. And try as he might to break through into the first team, he could never quite get there, as Guangzhou purchased big names like Anderson Taliska, Paulinho, and of course, Thick Dong. But after two years of futility, he pledged to himself that something had to change. And on that day, he promised that he would be the best in the world. And the only way to do it was through the most impossible, grueling training regiment ever seen by man. And that was 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 100 squats, and a 10 kilometer run every day, no matter what, no excuses. In the summer, he refused to use the AC to save money. That doesn't really have to do with it, but it, it made him tougher. He did those 100 squats every single day for two years. Even when his legs felt like jello, he kept squatting and squatting. And after those two years, he noticed a difference. He had squatted so hard that his hair fell out. But something else was different too. His legs felt strong as steel. And when he lay foot to ball, it didn't matter where he was on the pitch. With one strike, he could put it into the net from anywhere. And from that point on, he was no longer Quan Yi. He was now Quan Punch Man. On ye how you much of weirdos, and welcome back to episode 9 of the channel runs everything to remote. As you've already seen in the intro, let me introduce you to the one, the only, Juan Punch Man. AKA One Punch Man, AKA as my Mexican brothers call him. Quan Punch Man. Shout out to all my Mexicans. You might remember him because this guy is Quan Yi. He, a couple episodes ago, was one of the kids that we found in the Youth Academy that had a monstrous potential. And we turned him into Quan Punch Man because this is what I've kind of opted to do on the streams now is I allow the Twitch chat to determine how we are going to customize these youngsters from now on. And when someone in the chat came up with Quan Punch Man, it was just, it was just destiny. Because not only naturally, does he possess five star skill moves and a five star weak foot it's without me even touching anything? This happened on stream when I went to look up One Punch Man's actual height and weight. Oh, how many centimeters is that? 175. Oh, he's already. Wow! Bro! What? Are you guys seeing this? But 175 centimeters and 70 kilograms without me editing anything. Without me editing anything. Height. 175 centimeters weight 70 kilograms bro what destiny bro there was no chinese steroids added to this bed all he did was every single day for a year 100 pushes 100 sit-ups 100 squats and a 10 kilometer run and this is what it got him we gave him 99 long shots 99 shot power 99 volleys and 99 long pass and we didn't change anything else about him he just has one attribute that's super ridiculous so that's he can kick the shit out of the ball and the chat opted to give him one trait one club player, get it. <laughs> he also has the distance shooter speciality because of his monstrous stats, but uh, you can't see it here, but he also possesses a trait to punch the ball if he was ever a keeper. Chat, you guys are fucking memes. Speaking of which, maybe foolishly in the last episode, I made it so that anything in the comment section that had over, I believe, like 250 likes, I had to at least entertain. So there were like six or seven comments that actually went over the 250 like limit. So I'm just gonna keep it to the top three. Otherwise, this whole episode will just be petitions. But overwhelmingly, 848 of you guys came in with Umbreon guy 227 and says petition to give Wang Gang Jr. 99 stats and every goalkeeping stat because Wang Gang has superhuman reactions and actually taught David De Gea how to save. Undoubtedly, this came about because Wang Gang had a playing goal in the last episode. But sure, if you want to give him 99 goalkeeping and everything, that's fine. I'm not going to change his like secondary uh, positioning to goalkeeper because then it would be just way too OP. But in the rare case, if one of our keepers gets sent off again, 
we have a natural replacement. In fact, maybe I should try to get our keeper sent off. And since Wang Gang won the MVP of the last episode, I'll go ahead and I'll do that right now. Let's give him 99 in all of his goalkeeping stats. That'll be his reward. So boom, chicka, boom, boom. 99 in all his goalkeeping stats. <laughs> Next petition up is from ZuberQ, and he said a petition to clone Fabio Cannavaro because he is the current coach of China. Edit, if you can't clone Cannavaro's icon card, then maybe you can scout in Italy. 465 of you thought it was a great idea, and I actually actually agree. I think this is twofold. Uh, one, I don't think I would just want to clone an icon and put them into the game, at least not right now. Just because I think already there's enough stuff that's making us pretty OP, I don't want to go overboard, and I want to keep it pretty shiny. But secondly, if he's the current coach of China and his face is in the game, we could just make him our current coach. There's the power of the cheat engine and my boy LWS. I went ahead and talked with him, and he's going to sort me out, and we're going to make Cannavaro the coach for this save for the rest of the series. <laughs> so we're going to have the actual coach of China in it. And for the second part, to scout Italy, I think that's freaking brilliant. We were already doing the Asian invasion this season. Next season, once we get in the Prem, we're going to have the Marco Polo exchange with Italy. You guys don't know, Marco Polo spent a lot of time in ancient China, then coming back to Italy with a lot of brilliant ideas. Let's be honest, Italy ripped off a lot of the best stuff, like pasta, noodles, ravioli, all that going from China. Cheap imitations of Chinese. I'm kidding. Italian food is delicious. But for giving the Italians fettuccine and tortellini, the least that they could do is maybe give us back a tonali or a romanoli. Fair sir, but that's preview for next season. Now, some of you stew guys might be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. If we are going to be bringing in Cannavaro as the head coach of China, then what's going to happen to you, be modest? What will happen to Chairman Bao? That's where it gets interesting in the next petition I'm bringing up, and that is Paranjoy Gupta goes ahead and says petition to clone b Monis himself into the team 523 likes and a lot of you guys in the chat on twitch everywhere have been telling me put yourself in the game we want to see that boy bok choy the thickest asian on youtube go ahead and get in and to that i don't i don't know i'll put that one up in the i think would you want me to go ahead and join the squad as a player coach and the way that i would do it is i would set myself up the exact same height weight and most of my physical abilities that i have right now i'll put it into the game i'll probably come out to like a 15 overall player but i'll put my potential to be like special be a long road to get me up to professional footballer but it could be a fun one and then on to the votes when i asked you guys about cloning messi and ronaldo it was really really divided 41% of you guys said yes clone everyone then 34 of you guys said only clone Messi and Ronaldo and then almost 25% of you guys said no it's too ridiculous to me what I'm reading this is over 50% of you guys are saying that there's a little bit of apprehension about cloning and to me I think I'm just gonna put cloning on hold for now and then the reason is is I think there's enough of you guys in the audience that have apprehension about this cloning stuff that it could kill the series for you it could make it uninteresting and I mean come on once you have Messi and Ronaldo Ronaldo in this squad is there any challenge going for and as for the other votes when asked if we should nationalize Koreans for humanitarian reasons I'm, I'm just so happy that 90% of my audience has such big hearts and you just opened up our doors to all those Koreans coming in that's what we have done here Hungman's son is now a Chinese citizen and to honor that he has changed his name to kimchi daga which translates in Chinese to kimchi daga and Kang Lee who has the potential to be special is now also a Chinese national what this does is free up two more spots for us to go ahead and bring in international players in this season. So what we could do is two popular names who keep on popping up in the chat as well in the comment section is Amaric Laporte. A lot of you guys have alerted me that he has yet to be capped for the French national side, as well as Leon Bailey who plays for Jamaica, who is not a traditional powerhouse in world football. Or we can opt to stick with our Asian invasion theme and go in for Takefusa Kubo, who is a highly touted cam. He's got about 85 potential. Or Hong Kwok Song, who is a striker. He's from North Korea, which is always going to be fun. Five star weak foot and has a potential about 83, 84 as well. Now, while these two are lower end potential Leon Bailey we kind of don't need because I mean we already have Alfonso Davies who uh, honestly is probably a superior product to Leon Bailey and then Amaric Laporte even though he isn't capped right now for France I'm pretty sure that he'll eventually be capped but I leave it up to you guys those four will be our entries and the top two people will go ahead and bring it in the winter window which will be in the next episode also when voting if we should bring in the new boys from the Chinese Super League Mark Hamchik and Ramirez it was overwhelmingly a yes so it's going for Mr. Mr. Merrick Hamchick right now, who's 33 years of age. And as you can see, look who our manager is. 
<laughs> Newly appointed. Everyone, give him a round of applause. Give him a round of applause. I know his name says Chairman Bao, but they, I mean, just look at him. He's kind of barrel. Just whoever was in charge of the Chinese national team, we will affectionately refer to them as Chairman Bao. Current value is 20. Let's go ahead and offer 40, as we do. And let's see. The Barcelona rep thinks it's a fair offer. Okay. And he wants a wage of 120 a week, saying 240. That's not quite what my client was hoping for. What are you even talking about, bro? And as for Ramirez, so the power of the cheat engine and my boy LWS, aka the Pfeiffer, link up to his thing. Even though we started the save after Ramirez was added into the game, he was able to take my save and put Ramirez back in. We got Ramirez in here. He's in the free agent pilot because that was the only way to add him without like completely crapping up the game. So let's go ahead and bring in the old Chelsea great. And he wants around 25 in the wages. Let's go ahead and bump that up to 50. And there we go. Two new signings for the squad. Mary Kamchik and the Brazilian Ramirez. Mirror. And through the power of Chinese HGH, we have reversed their age back to 29. So we're going to keep their ratings up the way they are. Ramirez comes out to an 80. Got a sprint speed of 80 while acceleration of 82. So he's really, really quick for a CDM. And he's got fantastic stamina for 85. He'll provide us excellent depth. And then Mary Kamchik, who has actually super declined. I think his max is like around 87. While his physicals are a little bit low, he's still got excellent mental stats. And then his technical abilities are still relatively pretty good. So this will provide us excellent depth in the midfield and hopefully can carry us to the Premier League. But once we're into the Premier League, we're going to be relying a lot more on the Chinamen. And speaking of the Chinamen, you guys know the likes of Quan Punch Man and Lu Bu and Wang Gang Jr. But then there are certain players like Brian Gosling. And we've been approached by a team for him to transfer out. And they got me to thinking, why not transfer them out? Now, hold on, hold on. I know you might be like, what do you mean? This is a shine only everything. Why would you get rid of some of your best end talent? And the reason is, is the loan system is crap. I loan out a Taku Hentai here and then he's just going to grow by maybe like one or two by the end of the year. While if I sell a player like Ryan Gosling or Otaku Hentai, if they're just on a CPU team and they're owned by that CPU team, they will grow rapidly. Let them out into the wild, let them grow, and then once they're in the 80s, we'll go ahead and buy them back. We got the money. So what do you guys think? I'm going to hold a vote up to you guys. Should we start transferring out some of our youngsters so that they can grow fast? But enough of the transfers and enough of the talking. Let's go ahead and see Quan Punch Man and the boys how they did in the highlights. All right, boys, we back like bra strap. Shout out to Vach Lombardi. Stealing his phrases. How do you guys think about Quan Punch, man? Is it is it too much for you? Vote up in the I think he's as we start off our campaign in the championship up against ex Premier League side Middlesbrough. And look at the liquid football here. Sun attacking the byline. Inch perfect cross. Too easy! Too easy, Middlesbrough. Make it a little bit tougher. And then look at Wang Gang Jr. saucing on the Middlesbrough defense. A little layoff and a cheeky put in from Alfonso Davies. And then on the birth of halftime, deft little movement. Oh, unlucky! But Sun follows it up, got himself an assist and a goal in that match, and it was too much. Next, Made in China Stadium. What is it gonna go? Taliska, beautiful layoff. Sun does in the defender off of the woodwork and finds his way in two goals in as many games. But Sunderland, we're not gonna take this lane down. No! They fight back. It's 1 1. Chong lays it off. Andres Pereira does get his goal in this match. Beautiful, very Paul Scholes S arriving in the hole and delivers. A devastating strike and then Sun, another assist and goal for him in two games early contender for man of the episode as we go ahead and put them aside. Acton up next. They were the first to scare us a little bit, but then it was our turn. What are we going to work here? The Tiki, the Fata. System, beautiful left. There it is! Let's go! Do it! Punch the flag! Obliteration! Obliteration! Quad Punch Man getting his first official goal for China! And delicious. Absolutely delightful. And then I got a little bit, a little bit trigger happening! Oh. Okay, okay. Okay, just, just, just one more and then we're gonna kick it. Okay. A little bit too much. Let's just go traditional. Wonton Wang Ohimovich telling everyone to calm down, showing the people the nips. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. We haven't smushed our nipples into light, but already do it. Because they're up against Birmingham. And then a little bit more sauce, but too much sauce for Wang Yang. But it just literally keeps the ball in. Could have just let it run out of bounds there. As we recollect it, no one's marking. Oh, just Pereira! Look at that! Tell it, everybody. I don't give a coop about who this Quan Punch Man is. It's me, Andres Pereira. And he did it. He did it. Oh, my God. We got to watch this back right here. Look at this, 40 yards out, and a missile along the grass 
singeing it as it goes by. And if the last skull was Paul Skull's S, then this is peak Paul Skull's prime moments. And look at even Kanavaro! Icon, repping another icon. Andres Pereira now may be in the lead for MVP of the episode. And look at this clearance! I choke up! It's 101! Big Wang! Oh, too easy. Too easy. And then look at that beautifully weighted pass. Horrific defending at the back. What was that defender doing as Alfonso Davies gets his second goal of the episode? Both of them a little bit easier. And look at the movement. Wanton laying it off for Hungman Sun. Three goals in this episode. And the last one, we're going to put it in. Sheffield United. Look at this defense. <gasps> Okay, our defending is still not very good. <laughs> that was three defenders all whipping on the ball. You gotta... What was going through Bang Wang's head when that went on? And then, what is going on? What? My brain. Oh, FIFA's such a good game, guys. Carrasco literally just, like, <laughs> teleports through a bunch of defenders. Finally gets it in. But, as for the voting, let's go. Andres Pereira, two sensational goals for him. And then, of course, Hung Min's son. I think these two are going to be the ones that are going to compete. No Wang Yang. Or maybe, eh, we'll put in Alfonso Davies. And we'll throw in Quan Punch Man in there as well. Vote up in the eyes. So, yeah, boys. A lot of things to look forward to. And the next time I see you guys will be in the January window. Halfway through the championship. I'd like to take this time to give a big old thank you to everyone on the Twitchy Poos. All of our single one of you guys. It's been an amazing month and a half on Twitch. And without you guys, we would have not created the Quan Punch Man. And I think from now on, this is going to be a tradition. Every single weekend, we will customize one of the future great China men according to the chat on Twitch. And as for a treat for all of my Twitch subscribers, we'll be giving you guys preference treatment when we go ahead and make these guys. But I will be listening to everyone, so nonsense, don't fret as well. And when you guys comes up with a brilliant idea, just like Quan Punch Man, I will give you good credit. But yeah, this is going to conclude episode 9 of the China Runs Everything Career Mode. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you want to get all cut up, go ahead and click over here to do some or if you want to check out my latest FIFA 19 experiment, it's, it's a fun one. Go ahead and click over here. But yeah, that's pretty much it from me, your fat, fat lord and savior. Remember, stay yourself, stay humble. Until next time, guys. Joy -ying.